Who's a gamer in the audience? Raise your hands. And that means Angry Birds, everything else. Good. Let's go. I am Dan Eisens, and I work at an ad agency in town called Campbell Ewald. And I'm here to talk to you tonight about bringing gaming models to the workplace. It's something that's really close to my heart. So um, I think it's a really important thing that we can kind of get to. So this is a little bit about me, handsome devil that I am, face only a mother could love. Ladies, I have terrible news for you. I'm a husband, so you can't take me. I'm also a father-to-be, I'm expecting in June. I'm a strategist, a thinker, a fisherman, and a chef. But this is also me, folks. I am a bad-ass blankety-blank. I will take you out if you ride through Red River Gorge or any of the areas in New Austin. And I've learned a lot of things because I ride with a posse called the Widowmakers. <laughs> And there's a lot we can learn from gaming. We learn innovation, collaboration, and whether you're a Wild West cowboy or you're a blood elf storming through the areas of Azeroth, we can learn things from games. And we are not alone, folks. We are not alone. There are more than 183 million of us in the United States who are active gamers. Active gamers, more than 13 hours a week playing. That's a part-time job, people. 61% of CEOs, CFOs, taking daily game breaks. And more than 5 million of us, extreme gamers, 40 hours a week. Here's some more stats. Little old lady playing the Wii. She is over 50 years old, and she is one of the 40% of the women in the world who are gamers. Ladies, you're making a big comeback. Give yourselves a hand. Why do we play games? Games make us happy. We get a huge dopamine rush. That's what games do, and they give us satisfying work to do. And what games really do at the end of the day is they give us satisfying work, they give us a collaborative purpose, and they give us boundaries. So why does real work feel like this, right? You shouldn't hate going to your job three out of the five days of the week. We have collaborative efforts in, at work. We have the ability to solve problems, but, game, but work isn't set up like a game. So I think we need to make work more like a game. Game work is really rewarding because it's a repeatable process. There's constant feedback that's happening in the game world, and we can really learn some lessons from video games, even if we're playing Angry Birds, we can learn things from that. So how do we do it? We have to start by collaborating. We have to create a better environment to collaborate with each other. If you jump rope by yourself, you're working out. You jump rope with more than one person, you're having fun, right? <laughs> That's a hustle. You need two things to make gaming work in the workplace. First thing you need is engagement economy. And what engagement economy provides for us is an emotional connection to what we do. It's really what, what, it, what that boils down to. Engagement economy means that we are invested in what we're doing. And there's a couple ways we can do that. We start by creating an emotional incentive to participate in collaborative activities. We have to provide clear and consistent feedback because that's what games do for us. And we have to reward based on the commitment in that activity. And also, we have to make work meaningful to people. And that means letting them make choices. Second thing we have a problem with, participation bandwidth. Current corporate structures, business structures, do not allow for collaboration in most, most instances. You might see a pocket of it here, a pocket of it there. But if we don't have participation bandwidth, we're never going to get anything done in a creative way. So we have to take off those handcuffs, people. They might be fun in the bedroom. Maybe not. <laughs> We have to shed that existing corporate culture. We really have to protect these ideas and protect this ability for people to really take time to do this. And uh, then we have to provide feedback. Games are great at this. If you look at your Halo dashboard, you know what weapons you're using. You know what weapons you can kill people the best with. Same thing in the workplace. We should have uh, the ability to kind of talk about the, the skills that we do best and then apply that to what we're doing. So we have to create progress reports and a searchable database for people so that we know when we're doing key missions, key things in our organizations, who to involve. We also need to publish these things relentlessly internally so that we can empower the right people and teams. And finally, we have to be the pigs in this situation, people. We have to defend our gamers because they're a valuable resource to company because they're really innovative, they're really exciting people, and they think differently. How do we do that? We have to dedicate a specific time or portion of the week to allow these people to think in a different way. Think small groups, think activities. Empower those employees to take on personal research projects. CE did this for us. Ignite is something that we took on on our own. And finally, you just gotta get in the damn game, folks. Take the time, take a risk. Start with a small project and then get bigger. Learn things from games. Protect your gamers because they are very passionate people. And that's it. I'm Dan Eisens. The slides will be here. I'm on Twitter. 
And God forbid you want to challenge me in Red Dead Redemption. That's my gamer tag. Thank you very much.